Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Summer-like temperatures are coming back. Say goodbye to the fall-like temps for a while. Warm-ups on the way. Brandon is standing by with a look at just how hot it's going to get this week. Searching for justice, the relentless search for answers, and the disappearance of Danielle Sislicki changes venue, with one of the last people to see Danielle alive taking the stand. The person that you saw Danielle talking to in the parking lot with the hood up of the gray view, view it, do you see that person in the courtroom today? Yes, ma'am. For the record, could you please indicate where that person is seated and what they're wearing? Right here. The person that one of Danielle's colleagues places near her just before her disappearance. And this story does top our news here at noon. Thank you so much for joining us. Right now, Floyd Galloway, the man charged with killing 28-year-old Danielle Stizlicki, is back in court for a hearing to determine if he will go to trial for her murder. Danielle Stizlicki was last heard from on December 2nd of 2016. She was last seen leaving her job at MetLife in Southfield. She was planning to meet a friend for dinner afterward and never showed up. Stizlicki's friend was worried, so she went to the Independence Green apartment complex where Danielle lived the next day to check on her. Sizlicki's Jeep Renegade was found parked just eight feet from her apartment door. Her purse was left in the SUV, and that's when the search for Danielle kicked into high gear. Police announced that Sizlicki was a victim of a crime. And let's go out to Farmington Hills where Karen Drew is standing by live for us this noon. The hearing for this man charged in connection to Danielle's disappearance and murder. Karen? Good afternoon there, Rhonda. Today is all about is there enough evidence to get this to trial? And I will say for the prosecution, it has been a blockbuster morning. Over six witnesses, over 40 exhibits, but there was one moment in court. Police have been pretty tight-lipped. They haven't been sharing what they've been able to gather, but there was one moment in court today where an individual by the name of Brandon Williams testified the last time he saw Danny Sislicki alive. You saw Danielle? Yes, I saw her. Did you see someone in the vehicle with her? Yes. Who was that? The, the defendant. And what is the defendant wearing today in court? Uh, orange jumpsuit. Your Honor, let the record reflect that the witness has identified Floyd Galloway Jr. And that time period of when he saw her was December 2nd, when she was leaving the MetLife building in Southfield. Critical information in this case connecting Floyd Galloway to Danielle Suzlicki. Also speaking earlier this morning was Ann Suzlicki, Danny's mother. Listen to what she had to say. Recall, she also worked at MetLife, so she knew Floyd Galloway and saw him interact with her daughter. Mrs. Suzlicki, you testified that you knew that Floyd Galloway was interested in your daughter. Yes. Was he flirting with her? He flirted with her, yes. You would see this? Yes. Would Danielle flirt back? No, Danielle would not flirt back. She was a very nice, friendly person. Okay, so let me tell you what's going on right now behind me. Uh, Floyd Galloway is in court right now. He's listening. He's taking notes, not showing a lot of emotion in court. Now, back here live outside of the courtroom, I want to show you some of these cars that have been here, decorated right here with the hashtag Find Danny. This car as well, Find Danny, missing since December 2nd of 2016. I will tell you one of the detectives in the case speaking right now about what they obtained inside that Berkeley home where Floyd Galloway lived. We're talking about a piece of carpet that apparently was cut out of the master bedroom and it was identified with biological identities on that. So I'm going to get back in court, find out exactly what they were able to get out, uh, get in get outside of that uh, house in Berkeley, find out all of that. The detective is speaking. This is going to be a very busy afternoon. I'll be updating you online, on social media, and of course have live updates today at four, five, and six. Until then, we'll send it back to you, Rhonda. All right, Karen. Well, certainly we are now learning all of the pieces that the investigators and prosecutors have been putting together for all of this time and why they have Floyd Galloway there in court right now. So we look forward to your updates throughout the afternoon.
Meanwhile, the other big story that we're filing for you this noon is the state of Michigan appearing to be moving closer to a new budget for the state government, but a comprehensive plan to fix our roads is not going to be part of it. A joint statement from Governor Gretchen Whitmer and Republican leaders of the State House and Senate say that they have agreed that the best course of action is to immediately begin target setting with legislative and executive leadership to get a budget passed by October 1st. They have agreed to continue conversations about road funding in a meaningful way and table all associated issues for the time being. House and Senate leaders have strongly opposed a plan from Governor Whitmer to levy a 45 cent gasoline tax to pay for road repairs. Meanwhile, if you have been enjoying the cooler temperatures around here, but still are looking at the calendar saying, but it's summer, summer like temperatures are going to make a comeback as we take a look at a rather cloudy noon hour right now, Brandon. We are trying to thin those clouds out, warm you up a little bit because we're on the struggle bus thus far. 59 still up in Sanilac County. Lapeer checking in at 60. You can see at Metro and Grozeal, we're at 66. 68 Monroe, Ann Arbor, and Howell in the middle 60s. So we struggle with the clouds here next couple of hours. And then clouds will sort of come and go. At times you'll get some bright sun, 72 degrees. Clouds will fill in. Come and go, but it is a dry day. East northeast winds keeping us on the dry side, but you can see a stream of clouds coming at us from other showers and storms elsewhere. So the last bit of fall today, Rhonda 80s feel like 90s tomorrow. We'll have it coming up. All right, thank you, Brandon. Today is back to work day for Congress after an extended summer vacation and lawmakers face a loaded agenda in the wake of the recent mass shootings. Congress will be debating new gun laws. Two questions are what can lawmakers agree on and will President Trump go along with any of the legislation? Also, several spending bills must be approved in short order or the federal government could face a partial shutdown by the end of this month. Republicans and Democrats also agree action is needed on prescription drug prices, and that is an issue expected to remain a priority in next year's elections as well. Congress may vote on a replacement for the NAFTA trade agreement with Canada and Mexico, and several House committees are going to continue to investigate President Trump's finances and policies while talks of impeachment continue among some lawmakers as well. Meanwhile, Justin, North Korea says that it's willing to restart nuclear negotiations with the United States in late September. And President Trump has canceled secret peace talks at Camp David with Taliban leaders and Afghanistan's president in response to the Taliban now taking credit for an attack that killed a U.S. soldier in Kabul. Here's a look at how this could impact President Trump's plan to withdraw U.S. troops from Afghanistan. The body of Sergeant First Class Ellis Angel Beretta Ortiz arrived in the United States on Saturday night. He and 11 other people were killed by a car bomb at a checkpoint in Kabul. The U.S. has had a military presence in Afghanistan since 2001. As recently as late August, President Trump said that he was planning to withdraw thousands of U.S. forces from there, but 8,600 troops would stay behind for the time being as the war in Afghanistan approaches a second decade. Does President Trump turning his back on the Camp David talks change the plan? Secretary of State Mike Pompeo addressed that while making the rounds on Sunday news talk show. We're going to have to take a good look at that. We're going to have always, as we, every time we make decisions, and I've watched the president, this will be a, the president and the Department of Defense's decision about what our force posture will ultimately be. President Trump's going to uh, focus as with Secretary of Defense. They will think about making sure that we have the right force posture to deliver on the president's objectives to protect America from terror threats everywhere they emanate from, including Afghanistan. He's committed to making sure that we reduce the risk that uh, terror should ever strike the United States from Afghanistan again. Meanwhile, Pakistan, which has been facilitating negotiations between the Taliban and the United States, issued a statement on the cancellation of talks, and they are urging both sides to re-engage to negotiate peace. A cargo ship capsizes off the coast of Georgia. Coast Guard City report of the cargo ship, vessel Golden Ray, capsized. Up next, breaking developments and the search for missing crew members.